Poštovani članovi Srpske akademije nauke i umetnosti, dragi gosti, the protocol is also demanding for me to speak at least the first sentence in Serbian, but I will continue, of course, in the official language of this meeting, English. There is a sarcastical sentence that the wise people, people with wisdom, and I'm not pretending to be one of them, are able nowadays, in the fluid times we are living, to recognize or anticipate only the contemporary moment. So the future of education is something I cannot help, actually, with my discussion, but I will allow myself to think aloud in general terms about the topic that preoccupies me, about the future of university, and this by Lesha Kolakovsky's essay written far back in 1996 entitled Why University? He listed a number of points, just to mention a few. First, to what extent it is, is it desirable that university operates in line with the so-called social needs or even direct tasks imposed by the government or industrial corporations, labor market, or the like? If utilitarian position one, would this bring about the collapse of university? You can understand from the first sentences that I'm a bit conservative. Second, how to oppose undoubtedly harmful and, but mostly inevitable, division into two cultures, humanities and science, when it is present both among students and the teaching staff. University should persevere in the position that all scientific challenges are interdisciplinary and that social studies and humanities probably play a key role in overcoming the gap between different disciplines. Third, what is university politicization and in what sense it should be allowed and in what sense it actually suffocates its operational essence? On a very principal level, ever since 18th century, war was waged to liberate university from ecclesiastical and theological oversight in Europe. If the war had not been won, we would have become an irrelevant anachronism and spiritual culture would have moved elsewhere. I believe that nowadays we are also faced with a key issue of recognition and identification of new forms of pressure that university suffers, still political and still ideological as before. Fourth, to what extent students and some other, others, for that matter, directly and indirectly interested groups should participate in decisions made by the university? Considering an eternal issue of excessively difficult curricula, Kolakovsky noticed that the worst way of university management is to reduce the requirements with a noble idea but eventually making people miserable. If our civilization should exist, the lives of students and their professors cannot be easy. Globalization may prove to be a fundamental challenge faced by university in its long history. Although the opinion that it is in this society of knowledge that we aspire to, the institution of university will reach new peaks. Some skeptics predicted that if this, it survived at all, university will be nothing like the institution it used to be, accusing particularly the growing market of academic and research staff, internalization of curriculum, as well as commercialization of inter international flows of higher education. The new concept of economy of knowledge highlights the need to direct the education of students to development of skills and competencies for a global workplace, including a workplace anywhere worldwide. Students have to be prepared to continuously adapt themselves to the labor market where technological innovations spring up almost on a daily basis, where responsibilities continuously change, where vertical management is replaced by networking, where information passes through numerous frequently informal channels and where strategies are particularly complex since markets expand beyond state borders. Therefore, education has to incorporate assistance to individuals to perform tasks that they have not been originally trained to accomplish, to prepare them for non-linear career course, to improve their competencies as team players, to use information independently, to develop capacity for improvisation, and finally, to develop foundations for complex thinking as a response to the very reality of life. I can only say via Victis. University is the key place for synthesis of education and research activities. The question is, 
Is this a match made in heaven or a marriage of convenience? Gibbons and associates warn us that the very idea of science may be deconstructed. New paradigms of knowledge production are primarily characterized by the importance of context, not only in terms of the final application of science, defining scientific problems and selecting pertinent methodology, but to redefine the relevant, usable knowledge that is, as the author said, socially robust, whatever does it mean. The relationship between science and innovation is defined as ecosystem, where health of the whole depends on the health of components, and more importantly, health of the relationship. In recent years, we have heard repeatedly that fundamental sciences are a kind of luxury, difficult to sustain in small countries like Serbia, and that innovation are more sensible and thus preferable. This is just an oversimplification of innovations because innovations cannot be created without development of fundamental research. Sorry. In developed countries, in spite of an impression that funding is shifted to applied research, analysis revealed completely the opposite. In the last two decades, the pendulum swings toward fundamental research. I still vote for the university as an institution, institutional analyzed form of the very special biological capacity of humans, curiosity as a spontaneous reflex, ability to understand the world for the sake of understanding it only. In the 80s and 90s, we faced trends of education, corporization, and informal education. They had a fairly streamlined objective to reshape education into practice procedure to provide for a desired outcome. In a certain number of countries, these processes are accompanied with significant privatization of education. As long as 20 years ago, Milhars pointed out that the so-called corporate classroom is as big as the whole educational system of the United States. Some of these institutions are named Corporation University, which the author interprets as a compliment. The importance of university brand is therefore recognized, but also as a threat. Illustrating promiscuous nature of the term and potential instability of categories that we use in our educational system. Some believe that these threats are only the tip of the iceberg and the major, uh, the, the, that the major rivals of universities will be the mass media, the so-called infotainment industry and consultancy companies that will be more flexible than universities and organize global alliances faster. To put it briefly, globalization processes and relevant high techno technology alongside have translated the traditional concept of time and place into a single category. This is a special problem for universities since in spite of more or less successful methods of distant learning and the like, this, this institution is deeply rooted in its place. Is the relative autonomy of the university compromised with the advent of new paradigms of knowledge production? One dish particularly identifies public debates about certain scientific outcomes we online blogs and social networks, when opinion of any participant apparently carries the same weight as opinion of expert, as Tim Nichols perceived, this is a room to death of expert opinion. In this situation, what can this traditionally public, particularly scientific, educational, and art-promoting institution do? In 2018, statement of all European academies, ALIA, finds that the concept of transformation into digital society is also split. In this phase of tradition, public institutions will be forced to redefine themselves to be able to grow root into the new and uncertain grounds characterized by big data platforms, algorithm-led management, and global internet presence and activities. In an online society, institutions may be easily bypassed by platforms, knowledge replaced by search and information, shallowly equalized with data. This transformation may almost imperceptibly destabilize institutional activities that provide the and enable integrity, transparency, autonomy, and reliability, which we believe university does. Yesterday, I told a story about Umberto Oko, who commented on a provocative question of a student addressed to his professor. Sorry, but at the age of, it, of the internet, what is your purpose here? In the background of this rude brazenness, there was an idea that the internet was the magna mater of all encyclopedia. To put it simply, almost everything is there, except for instruction of how to investigate, filter, choose, accept, or reject. Being a university professor, Echo was offended by the question and said that everybody 
with good memory can store new information, but much larger skills are needed when it comes to deciding what to memorize and what to forget. Conservatively, I believe that schools will have to go back to the Socrates and Plato's idea of a dialogue that does not prescribe truth but seeks it, seeks it, does not enthrones it but investigates it, naturally in the shadow of uh, unavoidable old-fashioned ethics, a sentence that today we have too much mind, too little character just came to me. It is my opinion that only school and university, I think in a generic term, can instill the meaning of this relationship. But don't worry, it is only my opinion. Thank you.